This is not a message for everyone. This is a transmission for the star seeds, for those of you who know or suspect that you are something different, something unusual, not of this place. These are the messages for you that I, as the host of the Max Ante, are bringing to you. Don't expect anything here to make a lot of sense. Everything is entirely paradoxical and is for you to interpret and for you to discern what is true. So we're looking at the seven steps of being in the world. Now, we've already talked about the first two in the previous two episodes. The first one is being grounded in your body. What does that mean? It means being grounded in the world, the natural world, and then thirdly, being grounded in the human society. Now, your body is a gift. It's not yours. There's no you. You've come from Gaia. Everything about you has been grown from the natural world. You've literally, all of your blood and bones have been built. All of your cells have been built from the natural world. And yes, it's been trying to be taken over by the machine toxic world. And so that's why there are so many toxins. So you're going to need to focus on detoxing. We talk about that in the first episode about these seven steps. You need to go through that one there. And so the, the second step, which we've just talked about, is about realizing, and this is a big realization to take in, that this whole trip that you're on, that you call being alive, is actually a tour. So that's what this is. This trip that you're on is a tour. Now, um, once you've understood that, you're still going to need to have mastery. It's all about mastery in these first two steps. So why, why have the mastery for the third step? And that's what we're going to talk about now. What is it that this whole thing is leading to? Because the first three steps are the priority. Absolutely. I spent 20 plus years dedicating myself just to the first step, just to realize that I was in a body and how it worked and how to be in the world with other humans. It was so hard for me to be in the world with other humans. I trusted people. I thought people were good. I, I, I believed what people told me. All of that stupid stuff. Oh my God, no freaking way. People are clueless and people are dangerous for a lot of the time. Not everybody, but uh, enough of them. And uh, because everybody's out to, out to get what they can. It's a dog eat dog world. Just get real. Like This is about survival here. And so isn't this crazy? It's paradoxical. It's about survival. It's understanding that it's a dangerous situation. And, um, and yet, it's a tour. You know, you've been dropped off here in this world, in this kind of dangerous world, to fulfill, I would say, upon something. And you didn't even arrive with a, with a manual. You got here without a clue. Why? Because you, it was designed like that. It was designed for you to be clueless. Designed so that you were disempowered. Designed that you lacked pretty much all the information just so you could fulfill upon their agenda. Whose agenda? The power structure, the, uh, the, the elite, whatever we want to call them. And yeah, there's some pretty strange stuff about that group and how powerful they became in running this thing and what they're up to. We're going to get to that later on in other episodes because there is something very big and diabolical at work here. And you are a little piece in that game that's being played out here because that's what this is. There's a game being played out here between the light and the dark. And for sure, you are listening to these transmissions from the light to understand how to better be here, to be of service. Because that's really what's at the heart of this. In what we're about to talk about now is about being of service, getting yourself out of the way, your own selfish interests, because there is no self. You've just, you are here to be of service in the world and you're figuring it out step by step and you're surrounded by clueless people who won't even want to believe anything that we're talking about no they won't want to believe it and so like i said 90 plus percent of the people aren't anywhere close to what we're talking about here they are struggling with life and now and i've said that the first three steps are the critical ones what is this third one the third one is joy enjoy <laughs> it's as simple. This stuff is pretty basic when you come down to it. These whole seven days, it's, it's basic stuff. Uh, but people can't do the most simple things. And this third step is about enjoying and finding joy. 
Because if you can't find joy every day in what you're doing, then what on earth are you doing? This is really what it's about. The whole thing. These other steps, the first two we talked about, were all about getting to these third steps. This is a sequence. Each step leads into the next one. And so, that's what it's about. The whole process is a step-by-step process. And you can't fake it. You can't fake being in your body and being grounded in the first step. You just can't. You, you, you know, and other people can probably tell as well, that you're just not grounded. They can feel it. And you can feel it. And so that's why the first step is the priority. Get grounded. Get in your body. Become empowered. Physically. This is a physical experience. This is a physical tour. You are on a physical tour. The second step. You can't fake that. You either believe what everybody's telling you and buy into the system or you realize that it's a tour that you're on and you laugh. When you go to bed at night, you chuckle. You have a laugh. (laughs) Oh my God. This is a crazy world. Everybody's taking this really seriously. (laughs) They don't know it's a tour. They think it's real. They think that this is all that there is. That's what's so funny. In, in that paradigm, they believe that this is all that there is. Oh my God. No, folks, you're on a tour. And there isn't even any you. It's a paradox. The body and you, this is a gift on a mission, on a tour, in a world that makes no sense. This crazy world. Oh, okay. But you can't deny it. You can't get away from it. Because you show up every day, you turn yourself off at night and go to sleep and you wake up in the morning, usually, and uh, and you're back on, back in the tour, oh wow, back in the suit, back in the spaceship that they call the body, hmm, all right, and now, oh, the reason, what's the main thing, the main, main thing, joy, have a great time, have a blast, ah, find some joy here. Whatever words you actually want to use. If you love the word peace, great, use that. If you like the word happy, great, use that. Whatever word floats your boat, whatever cranks your dial. Tuning in, becoming authentically joyous. Because you can't fake being joyous. You either know every day that the things you're doing are making you feel happy and feeling joy, real, abundant joy, or they're making you miserable, or they're making you flat. I'd say there isn't really any flat, this is either miserable or joyous. Do you actually even know what joy is? Real, authentic joy? I would hazard the guess. Most people actually don't know what real joy is. They are that disconnected from life, from their body, they have forgotten. I'm talking about the childhood joy. Now, if you had a pretty crappy childhood, I'm really sorry about that. But, and there are plenty of people having that for sure. Plenty of little people, and that's really unfortunate. But there are children who do have a joyous time. I would assert that, you know, if you do the right thing with a kid, they will just authentically feel joy. And that's their natural state. That's your natural state. Non-stop joy. Anything that gets in the way of that is part of the machine program to get you off center, to get you out of feeling joy. Yeah, absolutely. You need to understand that that is the way that the human society is designed and built now, to not encourage joy, to get everybody distracted, to give them fake joy, to make them feel these little dopamine hits from checking out Facebook and Instagram. Give me a break, really? That's not joy. All the real joy has been has been pushed to the side. It's a fake joy that the world is experiencing. It's entertainment. It's Hollywood and Disney and video games. And uh, it just goes on. You make a big list of all of these distractions. People are distracting themselves with drugs, with alcohol, with sex addictions. All these addictions are... For, for money, you know, to get more points, to build that up, to, um, to power, to become, in, you know, this powerful, great, you know, person who can just tell everybody what to do, or become a miserable person, become a disempowered person, to, you know, hide away, you know, people are just doing, it's pretty obvious what everybody's doing, but it's not joy, it's not the childhood, authentic, light heart, the light-hearted joy, where you just effortless, effortless, effortlessly 
go about your day having a beautiful time. And if that's not you, that's the next step to figure out. Wow. I remember when I realized, like I realized, wow, I really got myself into a tight corner. I got myself into a straitjacket. I got myself into a real pickle. There wasn't, on the one hand, it looked like there was a lot of joy, like, you know, I had this whole family and, you know, business and success and you name it, all this sort of stuff. But that wasn't joy, it was stress. It was a front. I was pretending. It was a life of pretense, showing off, trying to look like I had it all sorted out. That's what I think a lot of people are doing. I did that for decades. It was stupid, profoundly stupid. Quit. Quit all of that. Walk away today. Well, (laughs) if you've got the courage enough to do it. When I realized, I did that. I just said, no, sorry, out of here. Just delete. Just stop. Because I realized that this is not a dress rehearsal. It's a one time around trip. Maybe you come back, but you don't come back as you because you don't remember any of the other trips, do you? Who knows about that stuff? I mean, yes, people, some people do, and I've had some inklings about that, but let's put that aside. This is a one-way trip just for you, and you can't fake it, you can't fake your joy, nobody else cares, no, because they're all too busy with their own stresses and craziness that's going on. They're struggling and just trying to survive. The average person is just trying to make it to the next paycheck, if they are lucky. Do you know what, one of my trips to India, like this is, let's get real with how the majority are living. I'm talking about the majority of people in the world. There was this guy, I was in the streets of Mumbai and I was told to kind of like, to ignore all the people. This is my first trip to India in in 2001. I used to go there every year to do silent retreats, a month of silence. And, uh, And so on that trip, this guy came up and people did tell me like, cause I was pretty terrified. Can you imagine being in India first time? <laughs> Man, if you, want to, if you want to see the intensity of the human realm, go to India. Absolutely, but be careful. Uh, but I do recommend it. India is magic. Wow, total magic. So on this trip, they told me that if a guy came up to me and he was well-dressed and spoke good English, mm, I could you know, potentially trust him some more. So, uh, this guy came up and he, 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 he offered to, to take me to some shops. That's what people do there. They're, they're always trying to get you to go into shops and buy stuff. And so I, I went along with him. I said, yeah, okay. Because he, something about him, at first I tried to get rid of him, but then he, he persisted and something about him, I, I decided to trust him. And then he took me to lunch. It was beautiful lunch. That, I mean, he basically, I bought um, this huge plate. It's called a tali. It had like, I bought the biggest one that they had and it had like, um, I kid you not, 20 little dishes on it. This huge plate. It was so delicious. It cost me maybe three dollars, and it was um, and, and and what did he have? He had he had like ten percent of the food that I had. He had this tiny little plate, and um, which he he paid for. He didn't. I, it, all, it all happened too quick. I couldn't actually get um, help him with that. But I, I ate about ten percent of my food, and I was completely stuffed and full. And I said to him, "Wow, dude, like, would you like the rest of this?" And he he said, "No, no, no, sir." He was so polite. He he rejected all of my offers. He told me about his wife and his three kids, and as the day progressed. I found out more and more about his life. I decided to spend the day with him. I got very curious. And what happened was that he lived in a single room apartment with his three kids, with his wife, and their parents. And he was the only breadwinner. He was the only person who made money. He worked three jobs and he never slept. He told me that his eyes hurt every single day, all the time, because he had to work without a break for this five or six people or whatever, how many people there were in the, in, the, in, the, in the room without any privacy. He was beyond exhausted. And his dream was being a rickshaw driver, one of those, pe- they, they had little pedal powered rickshaws. And I just couldn't believe this world that he was telling me. And it got even worse than that. Every three months they got evicted, a, force, a forcibly eviction. And so that's what happened in this world. They lived, he lived about three hours out of Mumbai, this huge city that has the entire population of Australia. The country that I'm from is in this one megatropolis, one of the biggest cities in the world. It took him hours to go from the slums, the, the outside of the city to get in. And every three months they booted him out and pretty much everybody else, he told me it was rampant there moving everybody out just as they got their life a little bit together 
they got booted out and moved on. And he was living in an agonized situation. When he told me what his dream was um, with this rickshaw, I, I asked him how much it was going to be. And he said it was uh, like 6,000 rupees. And I did a quick calculation in my head. That was about 240 uh, Australian dollars, which I, I made that at that point uh, in, in about a day. And, uh, and I said, wow, well, okay, so how, how are you going with the uh, with saving up? He said, also, oh, I'm getting to it. I said, oh, really, you're getting to it. How long have you had this as your dream? All oh, the last, you know, five or six years. So in five or six years, you've had this as your dream to to save up, to buy this rickshaw. And at the moment, you're working three jobs every day in agony, and you haven't actually saved up anything. He said, no, sir, but I'm getting to it. He was still being optimistic. I said, oh, wow, okay, well, hey, you know, I just need to get some... Um, uh, okay, maybe we can go somewhere else. I, I just want to go a bit of money out of the ATM, I told him. He said, no problem, sir. And so we went to the ATM. And of course, what did I do? I pulled out 6,000 rupees and I just gave it to him. And I said, dude, uh, don't spend this on anything else. Buy your rickshaw and transform your life. Don't spend the money on the food or your kids. Buy your rickshaw and start transforming your life. He told me he, he couldn't even cry. He had no tears left. He was that utterly exhausted in his predicament that he was in. He told me I was an angel. I'd been sent to transform his life. He used to call me after that when I got back to Australia. He was <laughs> he was so profoundly grateful, this guy. And, uh, he, he, but you know, see, now, now you're thinking, oh, maybe this is like some happy story. Don't kid yourself. Months later when he's calling me, you know, now he's in a new form of agony. His back is agoni in agony from, from all the backpedaling, backbreaking work of cycling people around on one of these little pedal-powered, um, you know, rickshaws. Somebody sitting in the back, a wealthy person who didn't want to walk, happy to pay him for him to pedal them around non-stop. So now his dream had become his new slavery, had become his new pain at point. Was he having joy? No. So don't kid yourself about the reality for the majority of people in the world. And if you haven't gone and had a look, I'd recommend it actually. I'd recommend going and having a look at how the majority live. That's what I needed to do. I needed to get real. I was born a wealthy white male. I get the position in the world. There's nothing I can do about that. That is the position upon which I have arrived here in this crazy world that ranks everybody, that ranks all the humans, that says, these people are better than these ones. You got that Australian passport? Well, guess what, dude? You're better than that person over there with that Vietnamese or a Salvadorian or Congo passport or whatever. You know, like seriously, everybody's ranked and there's no denying it. The white people from Europe dominated the world and ranked everybody. That upper class group of people that, that dominated the whole world, they set up this superstructure that's taken dominion over everybody. And it's not about race or class. It's beyond all of that. Really, don't identify with, I don't identify with this. I'm in a human form at the moment and I understand the position I have. And that's why I'm sharing this with you because I have access to certain resources that few people in the world have got. And when you recognize that you quite most likely have access to those same resources. Wow. Power is responsibility. This is a game of power here. Yes, this is a game of power. It's a dance. It's a war. It's a battle between the light and the dark in a world that makes no sense. In a, you're on a tour to watch and play out and be a part of this incredible situation at the most incredibly insane magical time. There's never been anything like this. Well, I don't know if never, but let's just say that there's never been anything like it because the history books don't, don't reveal the truth of what's been what's gone in the past. But we could say right now that here we are at this incredible moment. And if you have resources to transform your life, and if you if you aren't making use of them, what on earth are you doing? Are you kidding yourself? Get real. No one's going to show up and save you. That guy was lucky that day. He had some good fortune. He had whatever you want to call it, good karma. We can talk about that stuff in future episodes. 
I showed up because it connected to my heart, because I had been, already been at work for more than a decade at integrating into my heart. It has taken me so long to even feel. You have to thaw out. This is a tough world and people have become toughened. They are scared of each other. They don't want to help each other because they're just trying to get by and survive. Let, they don't even understand what it means to be joyous like a child. Do you understand? And if you don't, make a list. Get out your notebook and go write everything down that you're doing that isn't joyous. Write all the interactions, the relationships that you have that aren't joyous and transform all of that. This has to become your priority because this is like a one-way ticket. You're here, don't kid yourself. You are here on a tour to experience joy, period. That's it. Now, <laughs> we've got four more steps after this, but like I said, these first three, because if you can't even do the first three, if you can't integrate in your body and in the world and in the human society, well, that's where you've got to start. And then if you're taking all of this way too seriously, then you need to relax and chill out and realize that this is a temporary situation. This is a, you're in a temporary situation here. As you, it's temporary. You're on a tour, it has a start, that birth date that you got, that's the start. Then there's an end date, you know, go to the cemetery, have a look, you can see the dates of the end dates, you just don't know yours yet. <laughs> Apparently there's a magical book in India where if you find the book, it shows your whole life on a page, on your birth date and the date of your death. Absolutely. I've met psychics. I've met guys who, who people, who can reveal, they know when people are gonna die. <laughs> so if you do actually wanna know your death date, you could go find it out. But I bet you don't wanna know because that sounds pretty freaky, doesn't it? Because you don't really wanna confront the fact that you've got limited time here. Limited <laughs> time. It's not even real, but it is real, real in the human realm. And so there's a reality. It's all paradoxical. Everything is real and not real. That's part of what you need to get with the program here. Get with the program, it's all real and not real. Because the human realm, which has been spun by the diabolical forces, has created a situation that has everybody believing stuff that is not the total truth. But, regardless of all of that, at the, in the current moment, in the current situation, all these elements are real for you until you progress through all seven steps. If you can actually make it all the way to the seventh one, well, that's, whoa, that's out there. <laughs> but we're, you know, we're talking about the first three here and the first three are epic, epic steps. I don't know about you, but if you're like, whoa, that's a lot. That is a lot to take in. Make the lists and start transforming your life and do not settle. Have zero tolerance in your life for not experiencing joy. And understand as well at the same time, paradoxically, be completely easy on yourself. Don't be in a rush. Just relax. Just breathe. Just fully chill out. Just recognize like, wow, okay. So this is a big journey. This might take decades for you to do this. I don't know, it might not. It might take a short time. I think it'll take years. It took me many, many years to understand just these first three. These first three steps have taken me all of my life to understand. Now, the next ones, they start to come in quick succession. That is what is so cool because when you put the time in, when you put the hours in, when you start gaining mastery, when you go and do all the trainings and you keep pushing yourself because of the honoring you are an offering. Your life, your whole life is an honoring and an offering to the world, to Gaia. Understand why you're here. Tune into that. And if you don't have an ask for guidance, start requesting like I did to understand and start having respect for yourself. If you're not having joy in your life every day, start having some self-respect orientate yourself realize that quite probably you're like an ocean liner it's going to take some time that's what it took me years it was 2008 when i realized i wasn't experiencing joy my mother died in 2007 that's when i got real 2007 was when my mother died and i got 
to the depths of my bones that this was not a dress rehearsal. And from that day onwards, I started to orientate. How long did it take me from her death in September of 2007 until I started to radically experience joy or most of the time, it's a process. Uh, everything clicked into place. My the, the, the fulfillment of my objectives was 2013, the beginning of 2013. So that's 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It took me more than six years of active planning, of non-stop planning. I'm talking about it became, I was dedicated. I was ruthless with my whole life. I made the lists, I understood what it was gonna take, and I ruthlessly cut out everything that wasn't working, that wasn't joyous. And did it upset some people? You betcha. But I got real with the situation. I made the lists and I went for it because guess what? No one else was. In fact, everybody else had a vested interest in me staying stuck in the machine. Me being aligned to them. And guess what? They're all gone now. All those people that wanted me to fulfill their ambition to take care of them, they're gone. Because that's not what it's about, because they didn't have respect. None of them had respect for me in my life. You have to claim it. This is your birthright. Claim respect for yourself. Get rid of everything that doesn't respect you and start claiming joy, because it's your birthright to experience that on a daily basis. That's what this world is here for. The world is here for you to experience joy with an open and pure and clean heart. Now all that's left is for you to go claim it.